how do you create the life you want and how do you begin to have you know your subjective mind produce effects in your objective world now the quantum model says that the moment you begin to look for an electron electron you know is in a field of probabilities or possibilities and the observer comes along and the observer looks and all of a sudden boom the electron appears it collapses from a wave of possibilities into an event called collapsing the wave function that's a quantum event so mind and matter are somehow correlated so the question is can you observe your life the way you want and cause infinite patterns of energy to collapse into new information called the new experience in your life or a new quantum event so for two years we taught the workshops around the world and guess what happened not a lot we didn't see a lot of change every now and then we see people's lives were getting better here and there but what I was after was because when I wrote what the bleep I understood the science of changing your mind the process of change requires unlearning and relearning it requires breaking the habit of your old self and then reinventing a new self. It's what we say in neuroscience, pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections. Unmemorizing emotions that are stored in your body and then reconditioning your body to a new mind and to a new emotion. To deprogram, to reprogram. To lose your mind and create a new one. To move your energy out of the past and then use that energy to drive you to a new future. And so I saw what people did when they had spontaneous remissions. I saw four things that they had in common. All of them believed that there was a spiritual aspect to them, something greater that was giving them life that they wanted to connect to. They wanted to give that intelligence a plan, a template, a design, and then surrender it and allow it to do it for them. And so I began to realize that many, many people in the world were beginning to embrace this concept of quantum physics and spirituality. The second thing they had in common is they all understood it was their mismanagement of their life that created their disease. It was their 20 years of hatred, their 30 years of bitterness, their 10 years of guilt, their 45 years of anger, and those emotions they had memorized, and those emotions were driving certain thoughts, and those thoughts were reaffirming certain emotions, and how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. Thoughts are the language of the brain, feelings are the language of the body, and how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. But the redundancy of that cycle of thinking and feeling over time conditions your body to memorize that emotional state as well as the conscious mind. In the moment the body knows better than the mind, that's called a habit. A habit is when your body is your mind. And 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old, this is science, is a set of memorized behaviors emotional reactions, beliefs, and perceptions that function like an unconscious, subconscious, automatic program. So when people go to change, they're using 5% of their conscious mind to work against 95% of what they've memorized. And they would think positively all they wanted, but they've been memorizing negativity for the last 25 years. Or they create their dream board, you know, with their SUV and their hairstyle and the kid in the back and you know, fingernails and house. And, but they felt unworthy. It's mind and body in opposition. And so I realized that the very emotions of anger and aggression and hostility and hatred and frustration and judgment and fear and anxiety, and hopelessness and powerlessness and depression and insecurity are all driven by the hormones of stress.